again and welcome to the first in a new series of in-depth videos on how I turn various pieces. My thought process uh, down to selecting the wood and the techniques that I use as I'm progressing turning the piece. Well without further ado let's get started turning a goblet. The first thing we have to do is to decide what wood we're going to use. Now the good thing with goblets is that any branch wood or uh, fairly narrow limb will do for a goblet. I've got here a selection, we've got some oak, we've got some spalted beech, some cherry, uh, even a, a thin piece like this which is a piece of pink ivory, you can make a small goblet from that. We've got some yew and even some silver birch. Now as long as they're around the three, three and a half inches for a standard size goblet then it's going to be about oh, six inches, maybe seven inches long. Um, th all these will do fine and I think what we're going to do is to use the cherry for no particular reason other than that's what I want to do for this particular piece. Now this cherry is about um, three and a half inches across the widest point but it is an odd shape here so obviously I'm only going to get that sort of a, a diameter on both sides. The pith is offset which is good and there as I say is a slight uh, bow in it here so that is going to be the maximum diameter that we're going to be able to get. Okay so I've looked at it uh, before I take the bark off and I'll have a look then at the figure and decide how I'm going to orientate it, in other words what's going to be the bowl and what's going to be the base. Now quite often I will just eyeball where I want to place it between centres but you could use a, um, a centre finder that's my eyeballed mark there and just take three um, references from different parts and you see it meets sort of there but I'm quite happy I'll, I'll go here so that'll be there <coughs> and then I'll eyeball this bit here and make a mark there and this is just to start the process, set it up, balance it and then see how we go. Um, I'm using a spring centre here from Simon Hope, that's purely because I like to use those and just bring up the uh, tailstock and just let it go round and see and you're looking here as well, let's go to this camera as it's, as it's turning round you can sort of see what diameter you're going to get there and the same at this side you can see approximately how it's looking, how central it is. Now we've got this bow to contend with so the diameter is going to be reduced so we're looking at sort of around that way. That could actually go down ever so slightly that way, uh, sorry, go up there. Yeah. I think we're happy with that. It's not an exacting science. Okay, so we've got it mounted between centres. What I like to do first is to rough it down to a cylinder, then we can look at the figure and see which way we're going to orientate it. At this juncture it's important to stress, especially for the newer turner, when turning on the lathe always wear face protection at a bare minimum. I normally use my um, evolution respirator when I'm turning. Uh, that protects me as well as my lungs as well. When you're making a video it obviously isn't practical so I either wear my UVEX or safety glasses. So the choice is yours but make sure you have some form of safety protection. So with the piece between centres we want to have the tool rest so that you're just cutting on or just above centre and I'll be using uh, a one and a quarter inch spindle roughing gouge. I'll turn the lathe on, keep the revs to nothing as you start and then slowly build up until you start to get vibration because the quickest RPM you can use the better the turning. 
just got a little bit of vibration there we're doing just under a thousand rpm so again all i'm going to do is to bring this to round notice i'm moving my body as one i'm locking the handle into my thigh and just moving along the piece with my body as opposed to just using my arms and that way you get more control i can start to put the speed up a little bit now and now we're up to 1200 rpm and as you can hear it's a much more pleasant experience and it's cutting nicely too and don't forget you're not in a rush stop the lathe bring the tool rest a little closer to the work you can see the nice figure that's appearing now I want to get rid of that bit of bark getting to almost round and turn it up a little bit more now sort of 1400 rpm bearing in mind that the majority of the wood almost two thirds of it is going to be the stem just nice and slowly across the piece let's have another look almost there get rid of this little bit of bark here because the bowl of the goblet we've got to square this off and square this off here so the bowl of the goblet's going to be to about there then you've got the stem and then you've got the base so you can already have some idea in your in your mind of how it's going to go Just nice and gently let the wood come down onto the edge. No race necessary. Doesn't have to be perfectly cylindrical because we're going to be shaping it. Now just one more pass. And that should give us a cylinder for the bowl area. That's the top. I'm not worried about the middle because that's all going to come away for the stem and the base. Okay, this is okay because I've got to be shaping this. So my next process, and as I, I will keep saying on many occasions during this video, this is the way I do it. It's not necessarily, there is no definitive way really, in my opinion. So what I'm going to take now is a parting tool and just square up the end here and then you can see what I'm doing I'm just squaring at the end here then I'll be able to decide how I'm going to actually orientate it for the turning and we'll do the same for the other side and give us an idea of the dimensions okay that's good so now look at the piece and decide 
what's going to be the top and what's going to be the bottom. Bearing in mind, as I say, this will be turned away, so I'm looking at it here. And to be honest with you, I don't think it makes an awful lot of difference. There's a bit more um, character at this end, maybe. Yeah, so we'll have this as the, the bowl, and then this is the base. So I'm going to want to put a tenon on the base. Now I'm using the Axminster Sea Jaws. They have a dovetail on the outside, but the inside of the jaw is uh, straight with a lip at the end here. Now the diameter for my particular chuck is 56 mil for a tenon, so I like to do about 57, 58 to allow for um, a little bit of movement. Um, your chuck will be different, but it is important to get the size of your tenon correct or as near as you can because then you get a nice even grip around the tenon and the depth of the tenon needs to be just shy of the back of the jaws here. So we'll start and I know from experience it's approximately that deep and get your calipers and reduce and just measure and then you can carry on just until the calipers slip over the tenon. That's it. And just tidy up the corner, the face there, so the shoulder's nice and square. And as far as depth of the tenon is concerned, we're looking just about right. So it's just going to be shy of there. So the next operation is to, what I tend to do, I'll just take that to the bandsaw and just take off that nub there. I won't show that on the camera and I'll come back when that's done. So as you can see now, it's nice and clean there, so it's not going to foul the back of the jaws, the middle part. So what I need to do now is to just take out the live centre, keep the centre here just for squaring it up. To bring it up and then just bring it forward and there we go. A little bit of pressure and tighten up. Now the gap is a little bit big there, the tenon's a little bit wide, but I'm not worried about that on this sort of small piece. I'm confident that it'll have good holding power, which is what we want. And just spin him to make sure it's spinning nice and true, which it is. Now at this stage, I'm going to start to shape the bowl. Now as I said to you earlier on, I like to work in thirds. So a third of the bowl, and then the other two thirds will be the stem and the base. So I'm thinking approximately there for the bowl. So I'll just start, I'm using a half inch spindle gauge here. Let's turn the speed up a bit. Got the speed up to sort of 2000 RPM. This is only rough, and I like to have the bowl um, coming round like so, because that's just the way I like it. Maybe if I change the camera here, it would be better. So if we go to that one there, yeah, that shows me on the side as well. And the overhead. Good. Okay, so just literally start to get a rough shape of what you're looking at. We don't want to go too too narrow here because although this is a, not going to be an extremely long goblet, we want to keep as much meat for stability for when we're hollowing. 
not starting to get the shape I'm looking for. Take a little bit away from here, just to give me a bit more idea. Yeah, that's okay. And at this stage, I'm not looking for finish or anything. I'm just looking to play around to get the shape I'm looking at. Yeah, quite like that. And I can alter this as I want later on. So that's going to be the basic, bearing in mind, of course, it's going to come down to about here by the time I've brought it down to sort of stem diameter. So that's going to be, just clean that up a bit. Not necessary, but I like things to be as clean as possible. OK, so now we're going to address the hollowing out. So now I'm going to get rid of this little nub here, again using the half inch spindle gouge. Just nice, gentle cuts. Like with any cut, just let the wood come on to the edge. And we'll do. Now at this stage, there are several ways. I like to put a depth hole in to give me something to work from. And we look here, there's a little bit of a knot there, but that's going to come away. So that all looks pretty good. So there's two ways of doing it. One of the easiest ways is to just get a, um, a drill, just make a little indent here, just a little cone for the drill to register against and then you want it smack on center you can use the rest if you wish uh, whoop. see now I got a Push in. Pull out. And let's pull in again. And there, right, we go a little bit more. Make sure it's all perpendicular. Just press in nice and gently. should do. Now you notice I got a little bit of a catch at the beginning. Don't let those sort of things worry you. Don't hold anything too hard and too heavy. That way the catch is minimised. I'm not going to edit that out obviously. Now it's a little bit punky here actually. So we've got several ways of, of hollowing. You can hollow um, using your spindle gouge and that is back hollowing and what you're using there is just the left hand side of the of the wing and just swing let me pull out a bit so you can see a bit more of what's going on it's a bit too far there you go okay so literally all you're doing is using the left just the left of the nose and start to hollow out. Again, letting the wood come on to the piece.
another look. It's very effective where you can use the uh, a mini hollow look I've got from Simon Hope. Um, but not everybody's got those, so I'm just using tools that most of you will have. And if you haven't got the half inch spindle gauge, you can use a 3 8 spindle gauge. You just have to go a little bit. Okay, now I need to sharpen, so what I'll do is quickly sharpen the edge of this and I'll come back to you. So I've sharpened, which just took a couple of seconds. Um, when you get to a, a situation where you feel you're going to put more pressure on, it needs sharpening. Obviously I'm doing a video, so I tend to forget those things. Now already you can see it's cutting a lot easier. Just doing a bit of uh, refining now. Trying to get the contour inside to match the contour of the outside. Now we're not worried at the moment of um, the thickness. I'm not thinking about that at the moment. And just going a little bit more. Now what I tend to do to finish off the inside a little bit um, <coughs> smoother is use a scraper, a negative rake scraper. Now I've got several which I've made up myself and the one that I like to use is one that I've made, it's almost like a, a mini bowl scraper if you like. Um, and that just allows me Just put the rest up a little bit. That allows me to get a nice smooth internal. got the inside nice and then I'll just use a round nose scraper just to do the bottom as I want it. Just there. Just to bring it down. It's difficult to show you on the camera obviously and don't do as I do, put your fingers in. Just get rid of that little nub at the bottom. That's it. So that's it hollowed out basically. We do a little bit of refining, just a little bit thick there. And people ask me why I use negative rake scrapers. Well, I think they are more forgiving. Um, and they do leave a nice finish. A scraper does just as well, but you have to have the handle uh, raised um, to avoid getting a catch. And then it's really a case of how far you want to go. And I do tend to get a little bit over the top with things because I like them to be as perfect as I possibly can. And I could actually, from this angle, I could run that up the side as well. 
just to make that curve inside as I want it. That's it. That's lovely. I'm happy with that. Now what I'm going to do here is just very slightly just come up the side here. There's a little bit of a, a ridge there, so I'm starting well over. Just to blend that in. Just a tiny bit more. Yep, that's good. And now I can work on the outside to bring the width of the walls down to as I want it. There are several methods of sanding. You can use cloth back abrasive um, like this. You can even use a drill with a small uh, arbor. Or if you don't want to get your fingers in here, just get a, um, a dowel. And what I do here is just staple some Velcro on there. Then I can attach a pad to the Velcro and my abrasive to the pad. And then I can do my uh, abrading without getting my fingers in. And as I say, normally I'd put my extraction on, but I'm not going to. Now the big thing with um, when, when you're sanding is to keep the pressure the same. So, I'm starting with 180 because the negative rate scrapers have got a nice uh, finish surface. And then you can just put that there so that you can get to the base as well. And your fingers are out of the way. Have a look, a bit more. And the important thing for having the same amount of pressure on each grade is the finer grade takes away the previous grade. But if you put too much pressure on one of the grades, then you're not going to get rid of the radial marks. That's why normally I would use a drill because that negates any problem there. Okay, so that's the 180. And now we go to 240. And just Get rid of the 180 dust. And this is just my own personal preference. I've got to do the lip there with 180, but I should get away just with 240, I think. Is to finish the inside of the goblet and then work on the rest of it. Not quite as important on a goblet like this, but on a long stem goblet where you're going to be supporting the end as you're working down the stem, um, I feel it's an important part. Okay, so that's all the sanding needed. Let's just get rid of the excess there. And now we put some sanding sealer on the inside and on the edge. Make sure you get a nice good coat on there. Shall we get all the bits? And 
you go. Leave it for 30 seconds or so and just take off any excess. And allow that to go off. Now to negate any necessity to abrade any finer than 240, I like to use True Grit, and True Grit is an abrasive paste which breaks down as you uh, uh, as you rub it. So a good coat of that, and again start off fairly low, approximately 580 RPM, just to start the process off. And what happens is the abrasive particles in the paste break down and will end up giving you a finish at around 1000 to 1200 grit without the fine dust. And you just work on that for a couple of minutes. Turn the speed up to around a thousand RPM and just keep working the true grit into the piece and then take a clean piece of towel and continue the process until you get no residue on your paper towel and then that means that the true grit has done its job. No extreme pressure because again in the early stages as I say it's an abrasive grit and if you put too much pressure on, you could, in actual fact, develop some score lines. And take a completely clean part. And as I say, the true grit has done its job. When you've got no residue on the paper, which is now. Okay, so the next thing then is to apply the finish of your choice and in my case I'm going to be using Hampshire Sheen uh, wax. Just give a couple of 30 seconds again just to make sure the true grit has gone off. And I'm just going to give one coat of wax on this occasion but you can put as many as you like on and I'm often asked if you can use these goblets. Uh, with this sort of a finish it is purely for ornamental purposes. Um, there are several very good proprietary water resistant finishes you could put on. But that's for another day. Okay so again just work that in just under a thousand RPM working to the edge of the piece and then give that a couple of minutes to just get to a stage where you can buff it. So the Hampshire machine's had a couple of minutes just to go off, now we can buff it and around the sort of 13-1400 RPM and just a light buffing working to the edge so that you get no streaks and that's all there is to it and as I say you can if you wish apply another coat so that's the inside finish now, and now we'll start to work on the final shape. Okay, so now we're going to be working on the outside. Because of the 
length of the goblet, there's no need in my view to support the end. So how are we looking? You want to bring this back round here a bit more. So I'm using a half inch spindle gauge. Just very light cuts, just finessing that shape. Lift the handle, keep the bevel in contact with the wood. Yep, I like that. So now we're looking at this part of the bowl. Lift the handle and come round. Let's just take this a bit of this down. Actually, do with a little bit more speed. starting to see what shape you're looking for. Now as you know most of my goblets are like a bit of detail at the bottom so we'll bring this round like that. A little bit bulgy here so I'm just going to pick up a light cut. Starting to get to the final shape. Just getting rid of excess wood here. smaller. And a bit more actually. the sort of a shape I'm looking at but I want this detail here to be a bit smaller so take a bit of wood off here give me some room to work with so I was just checking the cameras on <laughs> Okay, so 
that we can get rid of. Now I want this to be a bit smaller, not such a big diameter. Keep it nice and crisp. So now while I'm doing this here, getting rid of wood, I'm practicing my cove, if you like, my um sweep so I can do that unless it's for the bit when I get down to the base but I can do that while I'm at this part of the of the goblet as well now we've got to decide what sort of detail I want and what's going to be the final thickness of the stem. I still think that can go down a little bit. And then just go in here, nice and gently. And then in here. Now I shall go to the 30 degree spindle gouge, 3 8 spindle gouge, which gives me that little bit of extra ability to get in there. And here I'll have the room to do that nice and crisply. Now we're looking at the final um, how this is going to come down. Now this isn't going to be a thin stem goblet, as I've explained. So just looking there, that looks looking quite nice. Now I want to get I want to get this piece here a little bit more defined. And we've got a little bit of chip out there as well. That's not very good. So we'll go back to the 3-8 spindle gouge, making sure that the bevel is in the direction that we want the gouge to go and just check that and that's got a nice no still a little bit there so we've got to come back a bit more very gently and then this way just to make a nice that down a bit more as well. Now you can use a skew for this, which I do normally use. Now that's all nice and a very slight chip there. So we've got to do one more little bit. Start off here. Yeah. 
and that's just about perfect although I say so myself okay so I'm happy with that and now it's a case of just working down the stem to the base so you want to get rid of wood now my advice always is not to take loads of wood away at the beginning because you want to have a little bit of stability behind you so we can go to there and then it's really a case of deciding how you want the um, what shape you want the stem now on this again I'm just using the wing of the spindle gouge this is the half inch spindle gouge and you're just bringing it along you're using it like a skew basically just to come down the stem nice and slowly no rush bit more there come in a bit more and um, yeah I'm liking that shape okay so that's going to be the general dimension I could actually put a bit more speed on now up to 1700 and just keep moving what away and as I say, as you're moving the wood away, you can do a cut to give you that nice curve and you're practicing on that and you can see how it's looking. But all we're doing here is getting rid of waste wood. As I say, this is the way I do it. Everybody will have a different method and all the time I'm looking at the length that I'm going to be ending up with because you don't want it too long and you don't want it too short but again it's up to the individual what you end up with I'm doing is using just to the left of the nose and the wing and just bringing it down nice and easily and don't forget when we're abrading we can do the final nuances yeah that's good get rid of waste wood again And again, ooh, no, what happened there? I wasn't concentrating, but because I'm not holding the gouge for grim death, the effect of that skid back is purely minimal. saying all the time I'm looking to see what sort of length I'm going to be ending up with and it's not going to be a lot longer than this actually and then just bring this down and this is where I could show you if you've got a half inch um, skew 
you can use the skew to bring the stem down. Now with a, um, a not a long goblet like this one isn't a long stem goblet um, you don't need to support under under the stem as long as you use light light passes you're not going to have a problem. I just feel that the skew gives you a little bit more control and obviously a nice finish too. Yep, that's good. Back to the spindle gouge. Now I could actually have a little uh, feature there, but on this one I'm just going to go and, and blend straight into the stem. And another catch. Just losing my entry cut there, but again, no problem. Just a very slight step there, but that would sand out, but you could use the wing of the gouge to get to there. Just keep it the same. Now let's have a bit of detail there, shall we? Just go across here, lift the handle and go in and then bring that up to there like so, and just round that off. Swing in the handle in, and just blend that in. Yes, I quite like that. Okay, now it's, I personally don't like the base any wider than the, the, uh, the bowl. So we're looking, I'm looking at it now and I just want to bring the base down a little bit. So I'll just use the, again, the half inch spindle gouge to give me some idea of the final diameter. A little bit more. Something like that, I think. And now I just got to finish off this curve with a final pass. So just come in nice and gently, lift the handle Swing it round, and a little bit more in there, pick up the cut. Just to get that little... And as I say, I, you can go as far as you like. You can do various things to it, or I just keep looking and, and fiddling about. Um, but that's just the way I do it. So basically, we're looking at the dimensions. We've got a little knot there as well, we've got to be a little bit wary of. Okay, I think that uh, basically is it. Now, the thickness, or the, uh, the thickness of the stem, of the base, that is important too, because you don't want it too clumpy. So in this case, I just take a, um, a narrow parting tool and, and start, say, there. OK, let's just have a look and say, right, we'll start there, see, see what that looks. Well, that's a bit, a bit uh, thick, so we can just play around with it, put a bit more in, lift the handle. And I think that's about right for the dimensions of the goblet. So now we just want to undercut a little bit here. Lift the handle.
all we're doing there is just undercutting so that it sits on the edge of the base. Okay, and that allows us then to take away some of the excess wood here, just move the rest a little bit, and then that allows us to get in here to sand the outer part of the base as well. that. Bear in mind this is all waste wood and then we can sand under there <coughs> as well. Now this last stage is sanding and finishing the outside. Now you can notice here there's a bit of a knot here and uh, if you look at it it will it starts to flex slightly from there up so I'm going to bring up support while I'm sanding so I don't have any worry. Now you can use the rubber chucky, you can use um, the one-way um, aluminium cone. The reason I don't like the aluminium cone so much is because when you're putting finish on here, it will actually transfer sometimes the, um, from the, the metal onto the wood. So I simply made my own, which is just a piece of oak that I've made into a, uh, a cone. And if you notice, if I spin this without the um, there, but as I bring it up, you can see it'll start to be, it's absolutely perfect. Now, also, if I use my usual uh, tennis ball, then that too you've got to get it dead center all the time especially with that bit of flexing there and this simply fits onto the back of um, there's a little face plate here and that screws on to the Axminster live center set so very good okay so now we're going to sand and I'll be starting at uh, 180 uh, working my way up to 240 and then using uh, true grit and finishing off with Hampshire Sheen. Now I've said before on many occasions that people tend to skimp almost on the last steps and they are the most important. So when you're sanding use an even pressure through each grit. As I say I'm starting off with 180 and Again, the reason I like the, the wooden cone is that nothing transfers from there onto your piece. There's also a little bit of a, um, uh, an indent there and I've got to be very careful when I'm sanding here to keep everything nice and crisp. Okay, so I'm not going to bore you with all the sanding but we'll start off and um, I'll turn the sound down because obviously I'm going to have my extraction on. So starting off with 180 and around the 550, 600 RPM is more than adequate. So now I've completed the 180, which took me about two or three minutes. I go, especially along the stem, like you would if you were doing a pen. Uh, just go with the grain by hand, turn the lathe off, just twist it nice and slowly. And <coughs> that will negate any possibility of radial marks. Okay, so once that's done, then we'll advance on to the 240 and I'll come back when I've done the 240. It's no point me showing you sanding because it's quite boring, but take it from me, spend your time and get it exactly as you want it. 
Before we go any further, the more discerning of you might have noticed I have my rings on, which is something I very rarely do. Always take my rings off when I'm in the workshop. However, I haven't got them on now. <laughs> right, so the next stage, I've sanded to 240. I'm happy with the finish. I keep saying this, do not concern yourself spending more time than you think you should when you're sanding, because you can use the 240 to really refine and get those little nuances just as you want. Um, and that's what I do, and that really is all there is to it. Um, possibly in a production situation, you would spend more time, uh, less time getting it exactly right. But uh, so, anyway, you put on the sanding sealer. Uh, I use the Hampshire Sheen pre-thinned. You can use unthinned if you wish. It's totally up to you. I just find that this works well for me. Don't be tight with it. Give it a good coating and then make sure you take off any excess after about a minute and then uh, let it completely dry before you start to apply your true grit. Okay, just use a dry piece of the paper towel and just get rid of any excess. Getting those in the little details there. let that go off. So literally a couple of minutes normally um, my workshop is quite cold although I've got the space heater on so it does depend on the ambient temperature in your workshop how quickly all these finishes or preparations dry as I'm sure you know. So we'll just let that go for a couple of more minutes and then I'll come back to you and we'll apply the true grit. Now when I'm uh, using true grit on a goblet I apply it with the lathe spinning. I'm only doing about 500 rpm. There's no need to be uh, frugal with it. And again, like with sanding, an even pressure. And just keep working it in and letting the abrasive properties do their job. So again, you see me do it in real time. I'll cut this now and then come back to you just before the true grit has done its job. And I'm just finishing off now with the true grit and the aim is to, I'm now going at around 1200 rpm and the aim is to have no residue on your paper towel and uh, when that is achieved it has done its job. And the whole idea of using true grit is to reduce the need to use uh, the finer abrasives. If I'm honest, I don't always use true grit, um, but it is a really good uh, method to reduce that fine airborne dust. And you'll get, in the finish, you will get a surface of around a thousand grit. Okay, so, and it feels nice and slick, there's nothing, um, there's no stickiness there at all, so it's ready to apply your final finish of choice, which again, in my case, is Hampshire Sheen High Gloss, but you can use any finish that you desire. And again, I apply the wax with uh, the lathe spinning, not too quick to begin with, around 500 rpm, something like that. 
And the main reason for that is, is that you don't get it flying around everywhere. So just apply a goblet's an awkward thing, I suppose, to um, to finish because you've got lots of different areas, different parts, detail, etc. Like with a bowl and a box, it's basically one surface normally. And again, not too much wax, but um, don't be too frugal with it either. And the main thing is to work it like on the base here, work it to the edge and move it around nicely on the stem into the detail and around the bowl and again with the bowl here you see when I'm touching the uh, support there, the cone because it's wood it's not affecting uh, any, no metal or anything is coming off that and uh, you can get a nice even coat. Okay, so again, allow that to go off. Um, again, with it being cold and a bit damp here at the moment, it's going to take about, I, I won't buff it up for about four or five minutes. So again, I'll cut now and I'll come back when I'm doing the final buffing. So now it's had three or four minutes to go off. So now the final uh, buffing and turn the speed up to about a thousand rpm just over no great pressure and just move your paper towel round on the wax even pressure because you don't want to melt the wax again which will cause streaking towards the edge towards the edge and there we have it a nice even finish no streaking and no radial marks and all we have to do now is remove the support and just to show you, you can see that there is a slight wobble on that, you see, which will affect when you're putting your finish on. Well, sanding really. So, all we've got to do now is to part him off and again, remember to uh, part off and undercut slightly. Now we started that undercut so that I could sand the edge of this now as I was sanding and just take your parting tool and nice and gently Not too high a rev because you can easily burn. So again, take your time. There you go. And there she is. And now what I'll do now, I'll just put my um, sanding arbor in the headstock and we'll just sand up that and the job will be finished. I'll be back in two seconds. And again, you want your um, base to be finished to the same standard as the rest of your goblet. So again, just spend time getting it right. 
And again, I'm not going to bore you with that. This will take about three or four minutes. I'll go through the grits. And um, you, could, you could actually just do it by hand if you wish. Or a handheld drill. Up to you. Depends what you have at your disposal. OK, I'll come back when I finish that. So here's the goblet finished. And it stands at just on six inches by two and a half inches at its widest point on the bowl here. Um, important points in my view is to make sure that the base is the same or in ideally slightly less diameter than the widest part of the bowl. Um, and you're talking in terms of thirds for the features, the base, the stem and the bowl itself. Um, the underside of the base um, I finished to 320, a sanding sealer Hampshire sheen and buffed it up by hand. Um, you can take as long or as little as you want to on finishing but I think that's very important. Uh, to get as, as good a finish as you can. And don't be afraid to use the abrasive to finesse the final shape of your piece, especially on a goblet when you've got the detail here under, under the bowl. Um, and there was a slight um, bow there, I was a, a slight lump there, I wasn't happy with it. So with the 240, I just finessed it to exactly as I wanted to get it. OK, well, thank you very much indeed for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you very soon on the next one. Cheers now.